Welcome to Durham AME Zion Church Visionary Outreach Broadcast. Your host is Reverend Letter A. Edwards. Now, let us enter in service. Welcome to the Durham Amy Zion Church Visionary Outreach Broadcast. I am your host. I am your pastor, the Reverend Leonard A. Owens. And I want to thank those that are on the line with us right now. For those that will be watching us as we upload this to social media, it is a great honor. It is a great privilege, amen, for me to be in this position right now to be your man of God, to be able to share with you the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we are looking forward, amen, to a powerful and anointed time in the Lord Jesus Christ on today. Because on today, we are going to continue in our teaching series, The Seven Principles to Living a Faith-Filled Life. The Seven Principles to Living a Faith-Filled Life. And on today, 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 today is week number five, faith versus the fear factor. I am not a grasshopper. Subtitle, I am not a grasshopper. I cannot wait to share the word of God with you on today. Amen. I want you to stay in your prayer tents. Amen. Stay there and lift me up in prayer. Amen. I cannot do this by myself without the support of so many of all of you that just continues to lift me and to motivate me, to move me forward, amen, within this gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at all of your faces and I am so grateful, amen, that you decided to spend these few precious moments with us on today, amen. Today, amen, is the first Sunday in Black History Month. It's the first Sunday in Black History Month. You ought to say amen and hallelujah and bless the Lord. Amen. This is the first Sunday in Black History Month, and we want to make sure that we lift up our history. I'm proud to be a Black man. Amen. I am proud to be who I am. I am proud amen, to have strong, powerful, anointed Black women and Black men to be part of the ministry, amen. This is Black History Month, and so yes, we are lifting that up, amen. And so we are grateful, amen, for this time, and I will ask and just ask you even right now, amen, just to be patient with us, Amen. Because we want to make sure that we acknowledge, amen, the presence of God in the midst of this worship experience. So before we get to our next part of our presentation of our worship experience, amen, will you pray the spirit of God to come on this Zoom broadcast? Amen. Pray the spirit of God will come. Just pray with me just for a moment. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity. God, I pray even right now that you will invoke your spirit like you never invoked it before in the midst of this congregation. Although we are in our separate homes and our separate places, oh God, you are the one that's able to bring us together. You are the one that ties us together. You are the one that binds us together. Now send your anointing, oh God, and I thank you for it in advance in Jesus' name. Not only, oh Father God, for the articulation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
for God for the hearing and the understanding and for the releasing of your power here on earth. I pray for this in Jesus' name that you will get all glory, that you will get all praise. And we thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Come on, church, say amen wherever you may be right now. Say amen, clap your hands. Amen. Let me know what's going on in the chat room. It's your way to express to one another. Say amen. Amen. That, 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 that you are, are glad to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, you are in the house of the Lord. This is the Doom Amy Zion Church Visionary Outreach Broadcast. And I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we will have a video presentation of Black History Month. And then following that, we will have um, Sister Sandra Green come forward. She is going to read scripture for us. Following Sister Sandra Green, amen, we're going to have Sister um, Latanya Jackson come forward. She is going to once again, amen, lead us to the throne of grace through prayer. You can never pray enough. Did you hear me? You can never pray enough. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Mr. Producer, it's in your hands. February is Black History Month. But why? Where did Black History Month come from? It began with this man, Carter G. Woodson, a historian and writer. Woodson noticed that his people were, quote, overlooked, ignored, and even suppressed by the writers of history textbooks and the teachers who use them, end quote. So he started a Black History Week in 1926, and people celebrated it enthusiastically. They started black history clubs, and teachers started recognizing the contributions of black Americans in their classrooms. He chose February, by the way, because it held the birthdays of both Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, two men he believed had done tremendous work for the rights and liberties of African Americans. It took another 50 years, though, for Black History Month to become officially recognized by our government. The president at the time, Gerald Ford, said that we should seize the opportunity to honor the two often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Here's the funny thing though. Carter G. Woodson hoped that someday people would no longer celebrate Black History Month. He saw the day when it would no longer be necessary, when finally we would see black history in America for what it really is, an essential part of American history. That you enjoy that presentation, that video presentation. We are going to continue on. You know, this whole month is highlighting, you know, um, people, you know, within our community and within our history, you know, that has helped to shape it and to help us to be where we are at right now. You know, we are standing on, on the shoulders of our ancestors. And our history runs so far, our history runs so deep that I, I really do believe that we need to make that front and center, amen, not only for this month, but for the whole year. You are somebody. Always remember that. Sister Green, will you please come forward at this time and read for us scripture? And then Sister Renee Jackson will come forward, amen, to lead us to the throne of grace by prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. Scripture will be coming from Numbers, two different places. We will start at Numbers 13, starting at the 17th verse and concluding at the 20th. And it reads, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? 
What kind of town do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is, the, is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. And we're going to drop down to verse 30. And it reads, but Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land was traveled through and explored, will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people who saw, we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too. Uh, chapter 14 and 1. Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better if we, if for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted amongst themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Verse five. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Glory be to God. Amen. Lord Jesus, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, for they knew every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, not for what just for, for what you have done, but thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do. Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus. You Alpha, you Omega, you the beginning, you the end, you my all in all. And for that, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm praying, Lord Jesus, for all the bereaved all over the world, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you to comfort them, Lord Jesus. Give them joy when there's sorrow, sunshine when there's rain. Raise them up, Lord Jesus, when they're feeling low, Lord Jesus. Comfort them, walk with them, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm praying for all the sick and afflicted, Lord Jesus, asking you that you will heal them and make them whole. Lord Jesus, I'm praying for the people's minds, the ones that are in mental institution, the depressed mind, the bipolar mind, the suicide of mind, Lord Jesus, because suicide is real, Lord Jesus. Touch people's minds in these evil days, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're asking you to save them and use them for your benefit and your glory, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're praying for the incarcerated ones, Lord Jesus. We're asking that you will reform them, save them, Lord Jesus. Let them be soldiers for you, Lord Jesus. We need everybody in your army, Lord Jesus, to fight for you, Lord Jesus, to spread your word, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, to redeem mankind of his sin, that we could just go straight to Jesus and get whatever we need and ask whatever we need and believe, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we praying, Lord Jesus, for a dorm, Lord Jesus, our church, Lord we praying that you will help us spiritually and financially, Lord Jesus, provide for us, Lord Jesus. Help Doran be the example that we need in the community. Help us be the soul-saving station where people could come and get saved, Lord Jesus. Get deliverance, get healed, find safe haven, Lord Jesus. Let us be that light, Lord Jesus, that's so needed 
by the churches in these days, Lord Jesus, in these last and evil days, Lord Jesus. Just help us, Lord Jesus. I'm praying for all the members of Durham and their family, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, only you know what they stand in the need of, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you to save, heal, deliver, and make whole, Lord Jesus. Be with them, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm praying for the pastor and, his, and the first lady, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to cover them, Lord Jesus. Give them a fresh anointing, Lord Jesus. Cover them from the heads of the sole of their head to the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to equip them with whatever they need, Lord Jesus. They need more power. They need more faith, Lord Jesus. If they need more strength, give it to them, Lord Jesus. Lift them up when they feeling low, Lord Jesus. Provide for them, Lord Jesus. I ask you that you let your angels of protection be around them. Let no hurt, harm, and danger come that way, Lord Jesus. I ask you to keep them in good health, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for their service. Lord Jesus, we're asking you, Lord Jesus, that you give them more wisdom, more power, more faith, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, to continue in your, in, your, in your life, Lord Jesus, to continue to bring forth the word, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're praying for the past as he bring forth the word, Lord Jesus. We ask you that the word of faith that he's bringing forth, that he's teaching, Lord Jesus, that it would reach the people, Lord Jesus, get into our mind and our soul and our body that we just could Continue to walk on in faith in your life, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. We pray for the past and first lady family, Lord Jesus. You know what each one stand in the need of. Asking you to save, deliver, heal, and make whole. Protect them and shield them, Lord Jesus. We pray for the past and mother, Lord Jesus. We ask you to keep, hey. continue to heal her, Lord Jesus. Keep be with her, Lord Jesus. Whatever she need, provided for her, Lord Jesus. Keep us strong, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for her son that she brought forth, Lord Jesus, to share with us, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you for our pastor, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to have mercy on this world, Lord Jesus. I ask you to bring world peace to the world, Lord Jesus. I'm praying for our nation, Lord Jesus, that you will bring peace to it, Lord Jesus. I'm praying for our elective official, Lord Jesus. Let them come together as one so they could do common good for the common people, Lord Jesus. Yeah. The people is in need, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm praying for our president and vice president, Lord Jesus. Give them the wisdom and knowledge of how to move the country forward, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we ask you to protect them and shield them. Let no hurt, harm, and danger come that way, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, because you're worthy of the praise. You're worthy, Lord I, Jesus. I, I, I. Hallelujah. He come, Messiah, Messiah. How could I, my thank son, the Messiah, Lord Jesus? Lord. You're worthy, Lord thank Jesus. You're you, God. worthy, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Lord. you, Lord Jesus. To have mercy on the land, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on the people, Lord Jesus. I know you're great, not pleased great. with us as a people, Lord Jesus. But Lord Thank Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to wipe out this virus, this pandemic, Lord please, Jesus. Please, Lord. This, please, Lord Jesus, please. we ask you to heal the land, Lord Jesus. Heal the make land, the land Lord. whole, heal the Lord land. Jesus. Heal make the, the people whole. Just make us come together as one. He come, my my Jesus. I gotta watch under my Jesus. Oh. Lord Jesus, our heads, our hearts are heavy, Lord Jesus. We heavy, Lord Jesus, knowing that these are the last and evil days. Help us as saints, Lord Jesus, to step up and go out and bring the people in and witness to the people, Lord Jesus. Because we know in these last and evil days, people need you, Lord. We need you, Lord Jesus. All these requests, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, believing you, waiting for them to come to pass, believing them to come to pass, Lord Jesus. And as I close this prayer, Lord Jesus, please, please not to forget the ones that I didn't mention, Lord Jesus. Please not to forget to bless them, Lord Jesus. All these requests, I humbly submit to you, believing you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, help us. In your name I pray. Amen, amen, uh, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. My, hallelujah. My, Glory my, to my. your name, Jesus. Great, <laughs> hallelujah. I see you, Jesus. Great. Oh, help me, Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory Thank to your you name, God. Jesus. Glory you to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen, amen, amen. We want to thank you, Sister Green. 
for once again blessing us with scripture. And thank you, Sister Jackson, for allowing the Spirit of the Lord to use you in such a marvelous way in leading us to the throne of grace. I want to thank God, amen, for that word of prayer. I want to thank God because I know that prayer got through. Amen. And you want to be able to have saints, saints, saints that are around you, amen, that can get a word through. Hallelujah, 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 and hallelujah. I am grateful that God is raising up warriors, warriors for Christ. Amen. We are the same. And that's why we are taking the opportunity to teach you a comprehensive lessons on faith. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, the size of a mustard seed, you, with faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can say unto that mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and this shall be done. I'm here to let you know that God is opening up the windows of heaven, and he will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I stand on top of this word. I stand with the word. I stand covered by the word of God, and I am grateful, amen, to have this time once again to share with you. Well, I've been praying about this for several weeks now. Um, I thank God for all the songs, songs, songbirds that we have within our ministry. Um, and so we are grateful for today that Sister Donna Hensley, is going to come forward and to bless us, amen, with whatever the Lord has laid upon her heart, amen. And I'm grateful, 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 grateful. Sister Hensley, will you bless us at this time? Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Um, I was going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy because that's what you asked me to learn. Okay? Amen. <laughs> Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. My, 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 my. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Seraphim falling down before me, which word and art and evermore shall be holy, holy, holy. Though the darkness hide thee, through the eye of sin. 
Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, <coughs> Lord. God is in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Trinity. Oh, my goodness. That blessed me. I know it blessed you. Thank you so much, Sister Hensley. Amen. For welcome. the same thing, for allowing God, amen, to use you in such a wonderful and anointed way. We are so grateful, 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 grateful. Amen to each and every one of you. And we are going to get ready to bring you what thus saith the Lord. Matter of fact, I can go in and start preaching right now, but I, I, I got somebody else on tap. I had asked Sister Roberts, amen, to get ready to bless us on today. Sister Roberts, you need to unmute yourself if you're able to. Sister Roberts, can you unmute yourself? Hit that little microphone button. I think I did. I think you did too. Amen. Amen. And I was wondering whether or not you got that song ready for me. Yes, I do. Well, Sister Roberts, I'm going to step out of the picture and put you in the spotlight. Hallelujah. Not to highlight you, but so that you can highlight the Lord Jesus Christ, Sister Roberts. Oh. We, oh it's a song, Pastor, that's really on me. Can I sing that one? Absolutely. Absolutely. We need the oh, we need the we are we need the oh bless me now my savior I To the we need the oh my we my need my we we need the oh bless me now my savior I My, 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 my sister Gladys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, I don't know what you're, you're making me do on today, but you're going to make me have to work on this thing today. Mm -hmm. Amen. All of y'all just, just go ahead and just sing into my heart's heart delight. Amen. 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 I was saying earlier, you know, for devotion, you know, we come this far by faith was one of my favorite, but you want to talk about one my favorite hymns, holy, holy, holy. Come on now. And, and then turn around and Sister Gladys said, the Lord laid this on your heart. 
I need thee every hour, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now. Come on, somebody. Oh, bless me now. Hallelujah. Oh, bless me now. Oh, gentle. I come unto you. Thank you, God. Amen. You don't know, hallelujah, what God has done for you. You don't know, amen, what, what, what we had to go through this week. And I want to thank God that we have pulled in to the ship of Zion right now. That old ship of Zion. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. For which we are grateful and we are so, so, so blessed by. Amen. We're going to continue on with the word of God. Y'all done got, done got me all pumped up. Hallelujah. Y'all done got me all excited about what God is about to do in this word. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Green, once and again. Amen. For reading scripture on the day. And that scripture was taken from Numbers, the 13th chapter. Amen. The 17th to the 20th verse. Then after that, amen, Numbers 30. 14th, 30th verse, down to the 14th chapter, 9th verse. Thank you so much, because I need that word of God in my life. I need that word of God in my life. And we are dealing with the seven principles to living a faith-filled life. The seven principles to living a faith-filled life. And today installment, I'm telling you right now, you are going to be blessed and anointed you are about to slay some giants. By the time this message is over with, you'll be calling, looking for giants to slay. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to look for giants. Amen. To slay by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Faith versus the fear factor. I am not a grasshopper. Do you hear me? Faith versus the fear factor. I am not a grasshopper. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we thank you and we bless your wonderful and glorious name. And we ask, oh God, that you will use me once and again to deliver a word of faith unto your people. We stand of need, oh Father God, of a word of faith. We stand in need of a blessing. And so we ask that you will come and hide me behind the cross that men and women will not see me, but they will see and hear you. Let the words of this mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer, somebody in your home somebody while you're in your house, somebody where you are at right now ought to give God, hallelujah, some praise. Come on, somebody. You ought to just give God some praise all over. Amen. Wherever you may be right now, you ought to just thank the Lord for the goodness and the mercy, amen, that he has he has shown upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. This text, this text says, this text says this in verse number 30. Amen. It says, but Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and we can occupy it for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And, and they brought a bad report until them. Verse number 33 says, and they saw Nephilians, the sons of Anak, who come from Nephilim. And we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers. And so we seem to them. It seemed to ourselves that we are like grasshoppers. And so we, it seemed to ourselves. You, my brothers, my sisters, we need to be so careful on how we see ourselves 
and how we are looking to compare ourselves to other people. Let me back it up a little bit. Let me give you a little overview of where we are going with this series. You know, for in this series, you know, of faith, amen, in the context for which we are teaching, amen, faith, and I love this part, faith are the principles that tap into the creative power of God made available through man. It's the power of God that's made available through you by faith. Amen. Whereby, whereby man can transform, hear me now, man can transform conditions, circumstances, and situations, hear me now, in the natural realm that has that he has been given authority over. Did you, did you receive that? Amen. Let me know inside the chat room whether or not you're registering with what God is speaking to you even right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Faith in the context of this lesson, it's the creative power of God. Amen. That transforms conditions, circumstances, situations in the natural realm for which we are living in, my brothers and my sisters. Amen. You, by faith, you are able to take the authority that God has given unto you. Amen. And triumph over those things that will try to have you to succumb to it, to bow down to it, to be afraid of it. Amen. Faith versus the fear factor. Faith versus the fear factor. And I want to let everybody know this. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you came from. We all have to deal with fear in our lives. I don't want anybody, amen, to misrepresent this message. Amen. We all uh, have to deal with fear, no matter who you are. Let me, let, let, let me explain to you what courage is. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is the presence of fear that you do not allow to persevere over you or to direct your movements or your actions. Amen. Amen. And that's what faith is for. Because faith says, I am not by myself in this thing. I am not alone in this thing. It's not me going up against this thing. It's me and God. It's me and the Lord, amen, that's about to work this thing out. And for that, I am grateful. Hallelujah. And bless your wonderful name. Amen. You need faith to enter into the promised land. For as the children of Israel amen, are now walking in the promise that God has made to Abraham, that God has made to their father Isaac, that God has made to their father Jacob, amen, God is making a promise to you on today, amen, although we are going through a pandemic at this, at this particular time, amen, God says, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to talk with you. I am going to be your shelter. I am going to be your protector. I am going to be your present help, even in a time of trouble. Can I get a witness out there in, in, in Zoom land? Hallelujah. God will be with you. God is with us. Hallelujah. And because God is with us, we are able to achieve those things, amen, although they may be bigger and mightier than us, amen, with God on our side, on our side, who shall we fear, amen, for the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid of, amen, and so we begin to understand, and we want to begin to dissect Amen. That God, amen, is a God, amen, that responds not to our fears, but God is a God that responds to our faith. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. 
faith is the substance of things hoped for, our foundational scripture, Hebrews. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and what? The evidence of things that are not seen. Setting the scene for this scripture right now, amen. God has brought, amen, the children of Israel out with a strong hand, amen, out of the land of Egypt. He has brought them out, amen, by plague. He has brought them out, amen, by signs and by wonders. He has brought them out with a strong hand, amen. The Egyptians did not want to let the children of Israel go. They were slaves in the land of Egypt. They did not have their freedom in the land of Egypt, and yet God was with them. And when God declared, it's time for you to let my people go. Amen. No matter what the Egyptians said, or no matter what the Egyptians did, they could not contain the Israelite people. Amen. Just like, amen, nobody can contain you when God gives you a word. Did you hear me? No one can contain you when God declares, amen, and decree a thing in your life, amen, that no one will be separating you from the promise that he has declared to you. Can I get a witness? That's why you need to know the promises of God, not just in somebody else's life, but you need to know the promise of God in your life. You need to know, amen, where God wants you to go, where God has brought you from, and where God is leading you, amen. He is not just allowing you to survive, amen, amen. Yes, we have to live through the pandemic, but he's not allowing you just to survive. Survive, God got a plan. God got a mission. God got a promise with your name on it. Come on, somebody, get God a praise. I'm about to get into the nitty and the gritty on this thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And, and, and God brought the people out with a strong hand. He brought the people out. Amen. And everywhere the people went, amen, they filled the children of Israel. Listen, I want to serve a God. Amen. That with the Red Sea in front of me and Pharaoh armies behind me, I want to serve a God. Amen. That you can lift up your hands and the Red Sea, amen, that, 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 that's in front of you will divide and you can walk over on dry ground. I don't know about anybody else, but I had some Red Seas in my life. I had me some times, amen, where I felt I was trapped and my back was up against the wall, but by God's power, by God's grace, and by God's mercy, amen, I was able to walk on dry ground, I know it's metaphoric, but it's real also, when I begin to think about the goodness of the Lord in my life, I begin to get happy, I begin to get glad, because I know where God has brought me from, do you know where God has brought you from, has God got you through situations where there was no way out, but you made it out anyway? Can I get a witness, somebody? And guess what? God is not through with you yet. The promises of God is amen and yay. Yay and amen. Those are the promises of God. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord. I praise your name and your glory, Lord, because somebody's standing on a promise right now. Somebody needs you right now, God. I'm going into a little prophetic mode, but somebody needs a deliverance from you right now. Somebody's standing by the Red Sea right now. Somebody needs to cross over on dry ground right now. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They see you got to depart. Hallelujah. And then they cross the land and now they find themselves on the edge of the land of Canaan, the promised land that God had told their forefathers about. And yet the promise itself the real estate itself, the ownership itself was occupied by other people. And so what God commanded Moses to do was to get a group of representatives from each tribe and send those groups out as spies so that they can go and scope out the promise. Come on, somebody, because sometimes you need somebody to go in front of you 
to tell you what lies before you. Come, I'm, pe I'm speaking to somebody. I'm speaking to somebody right now. Sometimes you need some other somebody, trusted others, trusted others, amen, anointed others, amen, to go before you, amen, so that they can let you know what lies ahead of you. That's why I'm glad we celebrate in Black History Month. We standing on the shoulders of our ancestors, amen, on how they had to go through what they had to go through, and yet we ain't tired yet, amen, before Black Lives Matter, amen, amen, there was protesting on the streets, amen, 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 hoses, you know, uh, fire hoses, dogs, uh, sick, sick on them and yet they continue to march they continue to move forward because they believe in the promises of god like we believe in the promises of god right now and here it is that when the spies went out my my father's children there was 12 spies 12 people sent to spy out the land and they brought back with them pomegranates and fruit it was so big and heavy, they had to carry it between the two of them on the pole. But by the time they came back, they said the land was flowing with milk and honey. Can I stop for a minute? Can I stop for a minute, for a minute, for a minute, for a minute? Can I stop and let you know right now in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah, that there's a land in your household right now. Hallelujah, there's a piece of real estate in your household right now. There's a destiny in your future right now that's flowing, hallelujah, with milk and with honey. I'm trying to tell you something. There's a blessing that's flowing even right now in the name of Jesus. Right where you are at right now, it's flowing. All you got to do is cross over and grab your promise. Is there a witness? Hallelujah. Can I get a testimony? Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. And as the spies came back to bring back a report, they seen some things because there was other people that was occupying the promise. Don't get discouraged, my brothers and my sisters. Sometimes God got to let the enemy hold your stuff for a minute. But don't you know that you about to get it all back? Somebody, come on, oh, come on. Mm. Can I say a healing word for you right now? Amen. The enemy may have your health right now, but, but it's about to be released back into your hands. Somebody need to say hallelujah and amen. Somebody's about to get a healing right now in the name of Jesus. How do I know? Because he promised in his word that by his stripes you shall be healed. And I declare it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's the promise, amen, that you can stand on. And here it is, that the spies came back. They declared that it's a land flowing with milk, a land flowing with honey. Can I tell you that there are people that the only thing they want to do is to make sure you stay in poverty and not profit. You missed it. You missed it. Don't you know there's a system that's been designed to make sure you stay in poverty and not in profit? I'm telling you, I'm telling somebody something. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why. You got, to, you got to adhere to the promise because God is not a respecter of person. Come on, hallelujah. God is a respecter of his word. And when you respect God's word, God has to show up and not only show up, but God's looking to show up in your life. I have to hold on to this thing a little while longer because I got to teach you my lesson. Here it is. Watch this. 12 spies, 
10 of them bring a bad report. Because there's other people occupying the promise. There, 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 there was seven native people that occupied the promise. The, the descendants of Anak, the Amakites, the Hittites, the Jesperites, the Amatites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Nephilims. But they was most disturbed by the Nephilims and the sons of the descendants of Anak because they were giant people, people of big stature. The Nephilims was rumored to be, amen, where the sons of God came down from heaven and they intermingled with the daughters of men and it created a line or a race of giants. You see, there's a purpose behind the, the promise because sometimes God got to use you to eliminate some evil that's in the land. You're not hearing me? Hallelujah. You're not hearing me? You're not hearing me? Sometimes the promise is there, hallelujah, not just for your benefit, but for God's overall plan on the earth. Sometimes you got to stomp out some evil, amen, that's occupying God's territory. Can I get a witness, somebody? Can I get a witness, somebody? Can I get a witness, somebody? You don't need no power if you ain't going to use the power, amen, for the authority of God that he has given to you in your life. All you're going to use it for is to invent yourself. The devil is a liar. If I can help somebody along the way, I will. If I can make life better along the way for somebody, I will. If I got to fight, let me fight. I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. Whatever happened to that type of faith, I'm on the battlefield. And, I'm, I, you know, and, 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 and I will fight till I die. Whatever happened to that type of faith? Hallelujah. Whatever happened to that type of faith? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That you know you had to go take territory. That you had that, that you know you're going to get beat up a little bit. But getting beat up didn't make you afraid. Hallelujah. You got to go. You got to do what you got to do. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Ten, ten, 10 of them, 10 of them brought back a bad report. Two of them, Caleb, Caleb and Joshua brought back the good report. Caleb quieted the people. Hush, because when you ain't saying nothing, you ought to be quiet. If he's speaking out negativity, you ought to be quiet. See, Caleb knew. I'm about to teach you something else right now. This is for free. I'm giving it to you. Don't worry about it. Amen. God says you wanted you to have it. Okay? I'm giving you for free. Caleb silenced the people. Because Caleb knew, amen, you better keep your mouth closed. If you're not going to go with what God wants you to go, keep your mouth closed. Watch this. Your confession has everything to do with your faith. I done gave you something. Your confession has everything to do with your faith. And if you're confessing negativity, your, your faith is going out the door and fear is going to come on in. If you're confessing your fear and allowing your fear to guide you outside of the promise of God, Your confession, Caleb silenced the people. Because sometimes, if you if, listen, you don't need to speak out of turn when it's outside of the will of God. That's where folk get themselves in trouble. I remember when I was going through my times and my seasons of difficulty. Testimony, not a testimony. And I remember when cancer invaded my body. I remember, oh, pastor, you had that? Yeah, I have it. That's why I got this fat arm. Hallelujah. This is my regular size arm. This is my reminder where God has brought me from. I carry it with me wherever I go. This is the reminder 
or where God has brought me from. Well, pastor, why is that? I have no lymph nodes on this side of my body. Well, what happened to them? They took them out. They had to remove them because I had a lump underneath my arm, size of a grapefruit. Well, what happened? I stood on the promises of God. I stood on the promises of God. What did you do, Pastor? I confessed the word of faith. I confessed that whatever was in my body, remember, I'm not saying the C word to myself. Whatever was in my body, I declare, I, I declare it's underneath my feet. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the promises of God. Well, well, what happened, Pastor? I had to go through radiation treatment. What do you mean? If God wanted to deliver you, well, if God wanted to deliver me out of the hands of the enemy, whichever way he chooses, I'm going to go. I had to go through the fire of radiation. But guess what? I came out a brand new creature. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even though I may have to go through something, I'm going to have to go through it because you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Watch this. Then you anoint my head with oil until my cup runneth over. Come on. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you and me all the days of our life and I will dwell, I will dwell, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's my testimony. And what God has done for me, God is able to do for you. Yeah, it was faith versus fear. Yeah, I was trembling, but I was trembling and in faith at the same time. I ain't going around talking to a whole lot of people. Because a whole lot of people didn't have faith. A whole lot of people was like, oh, man, he ain't going to make it. I ain't talk to you. I got nothing to say to you. Get away from me. I know you mean well, but I, I needed folk that will surround me with faith. I needed to be around like-minded faith people, people that been through something and got the victory in the middle of it. Hallelujah. Faith versus fear. Faith versus fear. Here it is, here it is, here it is. That Jake, that 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 Caleb and Joshua was the only two spies that came back and gave a good report. Caleb says, "Let us go up at once. Don't give fear time, Amen, to perpetuate itself in in your being. Don't give it time. Squash it." Move forward. Take action. Take action. Hallelujah. Man, y'all done got me so happy. Amen. I done lost my place in my notes. But I got to give you this. Amen. I got to give you this. Amen. Because I'm on assignment. How many of you know you're on assignment? And when you're on assignment, you got to do what God tells you to do. Hallelujah. You're on assignment. Amen. 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 Here it is. Amen. You know, listen to me, y'all. I got, I'm going to go through these real quick. Amen. And I'm going to, I'm going to send my notes off. Amen. Have somebody type them up. And if, if, if you miss them, I'm going to make sure that you get them. But I have to go through this. Amen. Listen to this. Four critical requirements for consistent faith over fear. Consistent faith over fear. Four critical, uh, four critical requirements, all right? This is, yeah, yeah, that's what I, I, I'm calling them. I'm calling them requirements because that's what the Lord told me to do. I don't do what God told me to do. Number one, you have to accept God as the most significant other in your life. Who's the number one voice in your life? Who's the number one voice in your head? Come on. Who's talking to you when you talk to yourself? I'm about to get into this. God got to be the number one. 
significant other in your life. I don't care about boo. I don't care who's your boo. I don't care who your boo. Your boo cannot take the place of God's voice in your life. Watch this. Sometimes it may cause fiction. Sometimes, you know, you may have to walk away from some people. Sometimes, sometimes they're not going to be in agreement with you. And you talk about, I don't like confrontation. The devil's a liar. Amen. I, I just want peace. Yes, there's peace. There's only peace when you do the will of God. You can't try to keep the peace and then be out of obedience with God. How can you keep the peace? There ain't no peace. Got to do, God, God got to be the most significant other in your life. You got to take action. Number two, you got to take actions of obedience, even though you don't understand why you have to do it. Did I talk to somebody right now? Why you got to always know what, why? When God talks to you, God is not obligated to tell you why you got to do what you got to do. He's not obligated to show you how it's going to end. He's not obligated to. That's why you got faith. Hey, that's why you got faith. God is not obligated to let you in on what he already knows. He, that's why you got to operate by faith and obedience. I'm talking to somebody. I know you don't like this message, but that's just too bad is what God told me to deliver to you. You got to operate in obedience. That's by faith. And you, you don't have to know why. You don't, you don't, I don't know why people treat you the way that they do. I don't know why folks don't call you the way they used to. I don't know why, amen, folk want, you know, want to take advantage and think that, you, you know, you are insignificant. I don't know why, and I don't care. Because they are not the author and finisher of your life. God is. God is the strength of your life. Whom shall you fear? God is your joy. He's your all in all. Come on, somebody. When I get happy, I just get happy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Number three, you have to address every mental argument, fear, contrary to God's word or promise he has made to you. You have to address, confront every mental argument. You know where the devil likes to argue with you? He likes to argue with you in your mind. You know where doubt comes from? When you begin to question whether God is able. That's where doubt comes from. You know where doubt comes from? When you start looking at yourself and stop looking at God, that's why Peter sank because he started looking at Jesus. He was fine walking on water. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he doubted and started sinking. Hallelujah. You got to address those arguments, not outside of your body but what goes on within your spirit of your mind. I'm teaching you something right now. Come on. A lot of us, a lot of us got three or four different minds inside of us trying to talk to us all at the same time. I'm talking to somebody. I'm, try, I'm trying to give you something right now. Don't you act like you don't got about four or five different personalities living together all in one body. Stop acting like that. Come on, somebody. Amen. I may catch you one day. You over here smiling and carrying on. Catch you another day. You as mean as a cobra. Hey, come, come, what? What you talking about? That ain't me, Pastor. Uh-uh, uh-uh, don't even try it. 
I, no, no, no. Some of you, some of us, like all of us, got by, by four or five different voices inside of us. We got a voice for Sunday. We even got two voices for Sunday. We got a voice today, right now. And then we're going to have a voice when the Super Bowl come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> You got to be able to have God speak into your, into your, into your spirit being. You got to align those personalities by the word of God. That, that the, a personality should not overcome what the word of God is telling you to do. Can I pause for just a minute? I ain't, I ain't the same person who I was. 10 years ago. Don't remind me of where I came from. I know where I came from. Well, you was like, no, yes, I remember I was there. I remember what I did and I'm not proud about it, but it's but, but who I was back in the day. I'm sorry you don't like who I was back in the day, but God saw fit that he did not take me out of this life, that he knew what my future would be. He seen my possibilities. He seen my potential. And because I have potential, God's grace, not your grace, God's grace, not your, not your mercy, God's mercy was able to have me to live. And then I met Jesus one more time. And then I had to meet him again and again and again and again because he keeps working on me. He keeps working on me. I, 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 I was on number three. This is number four. Faith. You got to have faith. Watch this. In the grace of God. That he deposits to you under pressure. You got to have the faith a favor, grace in your life when he deposits it under pressure. When you under pressure, that's when God makes the deposit. Some of you don't understand it, but some of you been there before in your life. When you talk about pressure situations, that's when you get the grace that shows up, favor that shows up in your life. And you don't know where it came from. You don't know why it's working. You don't understand why the judge says everybody else goes to jail, but your son's going to go home. You don't understand that. Amen. But that's by that's faith under pressure, somebody. That's the grace of God showing up under pressurized situations. And you got to understand, God is a God of favor that cannot be moved. Come on, somebody. I'm so glad that God got favor on me. Aren't you glad that you have the faith of favor running in and out your life? Well, I want to close out like this. Don't let nobody corrupt your faith. Don't let nobody diminish your zeal for the Lord. Don't let nobody cause you to sin. You need to be a witness. You should never allow anybody to derail your purpose. I told you about my own faith testimony. You know, you know, my own health challenge in my life. I share that with you. But I know a lot of you got your own testimonies. A lot of you been through the fire when it comes to defeating 
the giants in your life. I don't know about anybody else, but I had some giants in my life. But I know when the giants show up, there's a promise somewhere. Did you hear me? When the giants show up in your life, understand, behind the giant, there's a promised land waiting for you. And all you got to do is go through the giant. God will be with you. He said so in his word. Even until the ends of the earth, even until the end of time, God will be with you. Faith versus fear. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't no grasshopper. Don't belittle me. Don't diminish me. And I'm not going to do the same for you. I'm a faith warrior. I come too far by faith to turn around now. In the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give God a praise, y'all. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. I pray that you took good notes today. I pray you learn something today or reestablish your faith against giants that have been set before you. Amen. I don't care where you go. You're always going to meet challenges in your life. But with this here, faith versus fear, amen, you're going to win. All the time, you're going to win. Even when it looks like you're losing, you're winning. Come on. Hallelujah. And bless your wonderful name. My father's children, you got to know him. And I know everybody that's signing on right now, I know you done gave your life to him. Amen. You're part of the kingdom. But this is a faith refresher course. Hallelujah. This is a faith refresher course. And so, and so you need to be able to make sure that your faith is running at par speed, hallelujah. Your faith is running high, your faith is running hot. It's not about how high you can hop. It's not about how high you can shout. It's about how you can handle life pressures and don't buckle and don't give in. You can stand up with your head up high, stand up with your eyes through the hills for which cometh your help, for all of your help comes from the Lord. My father's children, I want you to pray this prayer with me even right now in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word of faith that wins over fear all the time. God, we, we thank you for the promised land that you have given unto us. We thank you that you have held the promise, held the land, hold the territory until we was ready to get in. But now that we are here right now, God, I pray that you will release the blessing into our lives even right now. We want to thank you, oh Father God, although there may be others that may scream louder, may look like they hold all the power, they hold all the cords. We understand, oh, Father God, that all power is in your hands. And we thank you, oh, Father God, that you have given us the victory in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we thank you that we are about to slay every giant that comes before us even right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Not by our power, but by your might. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, 
and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. We thank God for y'all. Amen. We thank God for y'all. And I, I want to let somebody else know, right, that God is with you right now. Amen. Some of y'all are going through some seasons right now. And you're going through them, you think by yourself, but you're not. You are never alone. God has his way of making sure that you are covered. And what you're standing in faith by, don't you look in your past and just say, well, it didn't happen before. Because what, what happened before don't have to happen again. God's about to do something in your life that is extraordinarily special. I believe there's a reason behind this pandemic. I don't understand it, but God did not have to explain it to me. I, Like me, like you, we got to go through this thing by faith. And I'm going to go through this thing by faith. You're going to go through this thing by faith. Hallelujah. COVID, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You shall not be a death sentence. I know, COVID, I'm talking to you. You shall not be a death sentence. Take your hands off of everybody in this congregation. I don't got to talk nice to you. I'm talking in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. COVID, I declare, get out of here. Get you behind me. And behind everybody in this congregation. You may be able to, but you won't, you won't stay here. Oh, no. You're not welcome here. See, this is how you have to talk to a giant. You can't reason with a giant. You got to talk to a giant. Tell them where to go. You're not having my children. Not taking my babies. Not taking any more of my seniors. No. No, no, enough, enough. By the power of God's grace and by his mercy, you are covered. You're covered by the promises of God. Those are faith confessions. I know lost what I'm supposed to be doing now. What I'm supposed to be doing now? What, what am I, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing something else right now? Moses, Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go. Telling, telling you right now, let, let them go. Send in your offerings. Listen, first Sunday, we understand what time it is. This is our season of giving. We are about to come into our Lenten season in another week and a few days. Lent will be here. As a matter of fact, Lent will be here next week. Be, and we will be in the midst of our Lenten season. Yes, Easter's coming early, and I am grateful because we all going to need a resurrection. Hallelujah. We need you to be obedient and send in your tithes. Send in your tithe. That's the first thing you got to do. Send in your tithe. Send in your 10%. It's the only place in, in, in the Bible in Malachi, fourth chapter, that God allows you to test him. The only place, it's the only place where God says, test me and see that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Some of you need the tithe because you stand in need of a particular blessing, right? Sometimes it's not about money because money don't mean nothing if you ain't breathing. Money don't mean a thing if you don't have your, your health, right? It don't mean anything at all. The blessing don't have to come back monetarily. The blessing will come back as God sees fit, for he knows what you stand in need of. 
supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. Send your tithes into P.O. Box 562, Bayshore, New York, 11706. P.O. Box 562, Bayshore, New York, uh, 11706 is the zip code. And then if you want to send it to 1891, two options, 1891 Hexha Avenue, Bayshore, New York, 11706, 1891 Hexha Avenue, Bayshore, New York, 11706. You know, the more you give, the more you will receive. Do you understand that? I found out that I receive more when God knows he can, I, I, I he, he can use me to give to other people. And that's what I really work for. I really, I really want to just be a conduit for God and just bless everybody that I can. Amen. Amen. If you want to give electronically, you can through Giveify. You can find us on Giveify, Doom, Amy, Zion Church, Bayshore. You can find us there, or you can give through text, through Simple Give. Amen. Whichever way you decide to give, or Cash App, um, whichever way you decide to give, give. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall God give back to you. You know I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. I feel, I feel the anointing of God even right now. Even while I was talking, amen, the enemy is trying to show up in my mind right now. Amen. Because he didn't like what I just did. But I rebuke you, enemy, in the name of... See, this is what you got to do. I'm trying to do this in, 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 in live time right now because I don't want I, I don't want nobody to think that somehow or another I'm a super saint. Now I'm a typical average man just like everybody else. I have my my ups and my downs. I ain't nowhere near perfect. And you heard me, I ain't nowhere near perfect. I ain't nowhere near perfect. And even when you decree a thing or, or say a word, amen, the enemy wants to instantaneously flood your mind with doubt or fear. But I rebuke you too. In the name of Jesus. That's how you build up your faith. The enemy just don't want just to just because you said so, that doesn't mean he's gonna take some time off. No, he's not. But you don't have to either. Remember, God never sleeps or slumber. You do, but God don't. Man, I feel this thing. I feel this thing. What have you not done in your life that you've been afraid to do? Who, what, what are you hiding for? I know I got to end this. Um, I'm supposed to do something else. Where are you, Sister Kim? You, you need to rescue your pastor. Come on. Right here. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? All right, Pastor, keep on preaching. We don't mind. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. All right. Today is our church announcements for Sunday, September, February 7th. Um, so as Pastor mentioned, today is, um, is Black History Month. February is Black History Month. And so, um, you know, we should all be celebrating Black History Um 365 days out of the year, but I saw a t-shirt that says, I'm black all the, uh, you know, all year long, but during Black History Month, I'm blackity black. So I thought we'd share some little known black history facts. So most people think that Rosa Parks was the first person to refuse to give up her seat on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama, but there were actually several women who came before her, one of whom was Claudette Calvin, it was March 2nd, 1955, when this 15 year old schoolgirl refused to move to the back of the bus. This was nine months before Rosa Parks um, stand that launched the Montgomery bus boycott. Claudette had been studying black leaders like Harriet Tubman in her segregated school. Those conversations had led to discussions around the current day Jim Crow laws that they were all experiencing. So when the bus driver ordered Claudette to get up, she refused. She said it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side of her pushing her down and Harriet Tubman was on the other side of her pushing me down so I wouldn't get up. 
So, um, and also another little known black history fact, one in four cowboys were black and despite the stories told in popular books and movies, um, in fact, it's believed that the real Lone Ranger was inspired by an African-American man named Bass Reeves. Reeves had been born a slave but escaped um, West during the Civil War where he lived in what was known as the Indian, um, Indian Territory. He eventually became a deputy U.S. Marshal and was a master of disguise, an expert marksman, and had a Native American companion and rode a silver horse. His story was not unique, however. In the 19th century, the Wild West drew enslaved Blacks with the hope of freedom and wages. When the Civil War ended, freedom came West with the hope of a better life where the demand for skilled labor was high. These African-Americans made up at least a quarter of the legendary cowboys who lived dangerous lives facing weather, rattlesnakes, and outlaws while they slept under the stars during cattle herds to market. So those are just some little known Black history facts. You should always just, you know, keep on celebrating. And shout out to Sister Khadija. She was on live a couple of days ago reading a Black history story to her children. So, you know, we want to just keep highlighting those achievements. Also, February is Heart Health Month, so let's unite to prevent heart disease and stroke. Um, cardiovascular diseases kill nearly 50,000 African-American women annually. It's known as a silent killer of African-American women ages 20 um, and older. 49% have heart disease. Only one in, one in five African-American women believe she is personally at risk. And only 52% of African American women are aware of the signs and systems of a heart attack. Only 36% of African women, African American women, know that heart disease is their greatest health risk. So last week, um, a lot of organizations went, went um, war vets um, to highlight this. So it's a silent killer. So we should all be aware of that, and you should all get tested. Um, the Agape celebration, um, St. Mary's Amy Zion Church is going to have a Agape celebration called Love in Action, and that's going to be held on Saturday, February 13th at 11 a.m., and the guest speaker is our missionary supervisor, D. Darian and Proctor, and that is going to be held via Zoom, and so I'll send out the meeting information so that everyone can participate. Um, remember that we have midweek midday prayer in that um, every Wednesday at 1 p.m. and you can call our conference call number number to participate. And we also have milk to meet Bible study every Thursday, and that's via Zoom, and that's our regular login Zoom information. Um, remember to follow us on social media. Make sure that you are um, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and that you are um, subscribing to our YouTube channel where you can catch Pastor's sermons, especially the sermon series, because it's a lot and he gives it. And if you miss any of the points, you can always log in and we watch those and share it with others. Remember to continue to stay safe. Um, we want to make sure that you have everything that you need. If you're in need of anything, such as water, gloves, mask, food, please make sure that you reach out. And another shout out to our um, food pantry workers for their distribution on yesterday and for all those who helped with um, Sister Turner's canned food drive. Those are our announcements. Amen. You know and I know, amen, that we are able to do all things but fail. So I am grateful. Thank you so much, Sister Kim, for all that you've done. But thank you, church congregation. Amen. We are a people. We are a people together. Amen. We are, we are, we are giant slayers together. Listen, if you need some help slaying the giant, you call, you call somebody. Can't reach nobody, you call me. Amen. And we we will lock arms together. Amen. And we will slay that giant. Amen. Hand in hand. You are never alone. You are never alone. Thank you so much. Amen. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. We can't wait to next Sunday's installment. Amen. Next Sunday installment is week number six. Amen. Faith that leads to financial intelligence and integrity. Yes, we're going to talk about finance on next week. I think you may want to call up a few people and get them on the air for next week. 
Amen. For next week is going to be faith that leads to financial intelligence. Faith that leads to financial intelligence. Today is called Super Bowl Sunday. I believe that's what they call it. Amen. And I do believe Kansas City Chiefs versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't know who's going to win. Amen. I just know that you all are winners in my book. You all are winners in my book. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne of grace with exceeding joy. Now to the only wise God, our creator, be glory, majesty, power, dominion, both now, henceforth and forevermore. The Lord of God children say amen, amen, and amen. And as we say every week, and every week we say, and every opportunity we get, I always remind you of this. Continue to be blessed because you are blessed. Amen, amen, amen. See you along the way.